One thing that keeps showing up is a fivefold nature in creation. We call it a quintessence. I think one of the current physics views is the, of a quintessence, and that's when they talk about dark matter and dark energy, those are the, the fourth and the fifth elements in that quintessence in, in, in that conventional modern view. And we look at it and we see different explanations for what tells the conventional uh, story of, of dark energy and dark matter, uh, but we have our own view on, on what actually is happening in terms of the equivalent of dark matter is, is spirit matter, spirit minerals, the, which are essentially the, the, uh, about a dozen of the transition minerals that we normally call in their normal state transition metals, but this is a non-metallic state, it's a condensate. Condensates are, are known, they're documented in conventional science. The Bose-Einstein condensate was the first, and 2001 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded for the research uh, showing that, that Bose and Einstein, the two physicists who, who first proposed this low energy state of matter, that it actually it does exist. And the most recent one I've, I've come across is that light, photons, can form a condensate. And interestingly, when they do, they actually have mass. Fascinating. So it's a completely different state of matter, just like solid is different from liquid, they act very differently, and a gas is different still. And plasma is the fifth element in terms of a quintessence of states of matter. So we can look at what is the state of matter, and I believe all of these states of matter must be considered and modeled in how the biological, the living sentient being operates. They're all crucial. If we, if we leave them out, you know, our, our normal, our conventional view looks at the body and we see solids and liquids and yeah, there's gas, there's, there's oxygen, partial pressure, and plasma, well, you know, the term plasma in physics actually comes from the biology because plasma in a cosmological and physics sense looks and acts and moves like a living thing like the plasma in a biological system. It's electrically conductive, like the plasma in your cells, cytoplasm, or the plasma in your blood vessels, the, the blood plasma. So there is a relationship. Plasma isn't just an ionized gas. Plasma is also a state of, of electromagnetic uh, uh, flow and, and function that happens in a liquid as well, in a biological system. So that's a key consideration in, in the body because uh, we're made of water that's not just water. Some of it is the structured water that's not a plasma. It's a liquid crystal, which is, we could say, a sixth state of matter. Uh, the, the researchers working on it call it easy water and they call it a fourth state of, of water, but uh, it's actually, we could say, the sixth state. Uh, again, we need to take the biggest picture and take into account all these different functions. So there's a quintessence of states of matter extending all the way from a condensate to a plasma that have well, each, of, each of them very different qualities. We need all of those qualities to explain life. Otherwise we have to say, oh well we can't, can't talk about consciousness because we don't know what that is. We can't talk about spirit. We can't talk about the relationship between consciousness and spirit and the brain and the body. We can't talk about you know, electricity and light in terms of physiology, photoenergetic physiology. Yeah, we need to. It's the only way we can understand healing. It's the only way we can understand life. It's the only way we can understand consciousness and, and immortality. Our actual immortality has a physical, mineral, material, spirit basis. And, and that, it, that spirit is the vessel, the grail, that holds the consciousness. Consciousness is a function of that spirit body. And so there's interaction, and they interact with the biology. If our biology is toxic, then the spirit can't body is not attracted. The material substance of the spirit body is not attracted into its coordinated state, into its matrix to, to form and to function. So, so healing has to do with working on all those levels. And if we look at our conventional culture of, of medicine and, and disease care, uh, we see that, you know, on a material level, what do we do? We, we uh, in order to maximize making money, whatever that we think that is, 
It's, 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 it's an expression of value, which is, value is produced in the heart. But yet we get distracted by money, by wanting, desire. That, that It's a, a, an emotional function that reverses the energy flow of the heart to now we want something that we don't have, and we're striving for that thing that's really a concept, that's really about value. And so we put artificial value on synthetic substances that never existed for our genetic history, Therefore, they're, they're not, it's not possible that we're adapted to them as medicines, as, as healing substances. They're actually toxins. So it's a, an illusion that, oh, it reduces a symptom. But reducing a symptom can be a process that's making us well or making us sick. And with allopathic medicine, allo means different, pathic, disease. It means we're creating a new disease on top of the old one without healing. It doesn't, drugs don't heal. They mask symptoms, they cover them up with a new disease, and now we have to still be, if you take the drug away, the old disease typically will come back. If something is truly healing, it doesn't mask, it goes in, there's a dynamic relationship where it's, it's a substance, whether material or, or energetic or informational or spiritual, it's something that is being, it's, it's a, a component or an element that your body, mind, spirit system is seeking, is looking for, it's a missing element that comes in to help cleanse or restructure the, the system in a healthier way. And when that stru new structure is done, it's stable. The healing is done. You don't have to take that medicine for the rest of your life. Yes, there's basic building blocks of nutrients that under these conditions we do need on a regular basis. But, uh, but most medicines are, are not that, they're catalysts. They actually initiate a change, that change takes place, and you're done with them. We see the opposite in, in the medical uh, management of most chronic diseases, and even acute diseases, if you look at the research, it's fascinating. For example, if you have a headache and you take an aspirin, you increase your risk for chronic headaches because it's masking, suppressing the disease. What actually happens on a tissue level when there's inflammation, there's pain, right, a headache, there's actually an acid state, which is the body's way of expanding and dissolving the tissue. It's changing that liquid crystal water into a sludge that can dissolve the junk that's there in order to flow that out and move it out. And that takes time, it has to go out through the lymph, or through the meridian energy flows to another area and into the lymph, uh, or be digested by the immune system. The immune system produces oxidative agents right in place when, when your body can't eliminate something, say through the kidneys. Now it'll, it'll back up to here and you have that headache because it's not flowing out through those outward channels and through other uh, channels of elimination through the liver, maybe being broken down there. Many toxins are, are broken down in the liver to make them less toxic and make them more water soluble so that then back in the, in the circulation now the kidney can more easily excrete them. So these systems are all working together the best they can. Now we put in aspirin and we artificially alkalize, we making jello out of that soup of the toxic soup becomes a toxic jello. We're gelatinizing it, we're, we're reforming, we're alkalizing to where we reform the structured water, and but it's structuring in the stuff that the body was trying to get out, including the aspirin itself. And so we have the side effects, you know, probably tens of thousands of people a year die from the side effects of just non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like aspirin. Kidney failure is the most common thing. And uh, when the research first was, when, when the numbers were first crunched uh, at a hospital in, in Pennsylvania decades ago, many decades ago, to, and found this relationship, the researcher who found the relationship was fired because the hospital was receiving so much money from the aspirin man manufacturers that they couldn't afford to find that information. So it's not, the system we have is an economic system, and what is economics? It's our money system is, is, the, is based on the law of Hammurabi, which is the, the oldest written law on the planet, and it's the law of war. It's the law of how can one people extract the light, as much life energy as possible from another people. So we need a system of, that's healing, not a system of war. War actually means confusion. The confusion is that if I extract your life energy, that actually doesn't help me, and it doesn't help you. It hurts both of us. 
what we need to do is help each other. There's the resources we need are here in abundance for healing, and they're in the natural world. They're the energies and substances and information that our ancestors had available to them, because that's what our genetic biological system is adapted to, to, to thrive in this earthly environment with those natural substances. But it's a matter of having this, gaining the sensitivity, the awareness, the understanding in order to interpret our body's signals and calls for help and not, shed, not killing the messenger as we do with an aspirin or a steroid. You know, strong steroid medicines do the same thing uh, in over-alkalizing the tissues, which is why, yeah, they reduce a symptom, but in the long term, you know, you inject a steroid into a joint and you find that, oh, now the connective tissue repair doesn't work. Now the joint's not healing. Now we have more degenerative joint disease. Uh, the same happens with antibiotics. Antibiotics often are used to treat things that aren't even infection. You know, oh, I have inflammation in my bladder. Okay, we're not going to do a culture and sensitivity. We're just going to give it an antibiotic. And you know what? Hey, it works. It reduces the inflammation. The pain's gone. Thank you. We, we treated the infection. No, you didn't. You might have treated uh, a detoxification process where you're eliminating a heavy metal that was irritating the bladder, causing that infl inflammatory response. But now you put it back in storage. You just put off the healing, and you added another layer to heal as well. So, uh, so what we need is to, to replace, to under, by a under, higher level of understanding, replace toxic medicines with non-toxic medicines that support with material substance the nutrients that we need, uh, the, the cofactors, the, the botanical uh, helpers that, that are already here for us as, as food and medicine in the natural world. Uh, we, we need to supply the energetics. If we're breathing air and drinking water, which are important for health, if we're in a, an energetic environment, the earth is, is negatively charged. It means it's an antioxidant source for us when we're grounded electrically. So being grounded electrically, avoiding the stresses of artificial environments. You know, as soon as you put in metal pipes to, to recirculate the air in a building, the metal is electrically grounded and it takes the negative electrical charges out of the air and you wind up with positively charged ions in the air, which is the, 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 the toxins, the waste, the viruses, the bacteria. Why do we have the worst infections coming from hospitals? It's called nosocomial infections. They're absolutely, absolutely the worst because we have this positively charged air that, that bears these from one person to another through the air system. It needs to be negatively charged. That cleans the air, just like the negative charge in your tissues produces a clean tissue. And uh, uh, in a hospital environment, you can add ozone, just like your immune system would in the body, add oxidizing agents to break down those viruses and bacteria. So there's technology that exists we need to understand through a model that that uh, applies to our environment as well inter internal as well as external to to bring about a higher level of balanced health so the energies the material substance the light energy the the a natural spectrum of light has has all the frequencies if we look at the solar spectrum, we'll see the Fraunhofer lines that are dark bands where there's certain elements absorbing uh, light in the outer layers of the sun. Uh, but other than that, it's a broad spectrum. It has all the frequencies. And we need all those frequencies. Now, we can supply those frequencies through structuring the water in the body as, as the, the area of the body that's actively uh, cohering together energetically increases, we can reach higher and higher levels. And why is it that some, that people report seeing auras or even halos around saintly people? Because there actually is, there actually can be visible light emission from the plasmoids, the energy fields, around the head, around the body. It's, it's part of our natural radiant level of health that we all should be striving for. So, so the light energy, the electrical energy, the material substance, but also the information, the knowledge, uh, and 
the information can be at a conscious level, like you're receiving right now. The information can be at a subconscious level in our energetic environment through healing therapies. For example, the, the example if, if someone is praying for your healing, you're receiving information. You are, it's, it's an actual thing. It's not something that you know, we have a, a, a technical instrument to measure. We have biological systems to respond to, and we can measure the electrical response of the biological system to that information signal. Uh, so we can measure it indirectly. And finally, the spirit body itself. We need that spirit, the material substance, the, the ormus that builds the spirit body. When everything else is in alignment, the material, the energy, the, the, the light, the information, the blueprint, now we can incorporate those ormus minerals to build our spaceship, to, to repair and restore and construct and expand our ability to function, navigate, and to, uh, to help others.